Hey guys, welcome back to Young Americans Abroad. My name is Austin. And my name is Patrick. And guys, welcome to our show. Yeah, we got APT and PAT. They talking about young Americans overseas. We got McKinney, Pulisic, Rainer, and Des. Got that red, white, and blue. USA on the crest from England, Germany, from Belgium to Spain. Racking up all the medals on the trophy train. Got one thing on their mind. We're scaling some love. One day we can say we will win the World Cup. Well, guys, it's great to be back talking with you again this week. We've got uh, some interesting storylines to talk about this week. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Grant, there's been some injuries, right? But we also have some players stepping up, you know, across all different positions, right? You know, from goalkeeper, um, you know, midfield wingers. Um, it's awesome to see just because we are getting closer and closer to these these three World Cup qualifier game on Austin. So we need our players and tip top shake peak performance right it feels like things are building right we're, we're kind of you know one week out right hopefully the roster gets announced somewhat early this week and uh yeah yeah it's i feel like we're all kind of on nerves for, for yeah. next week right awesome. can, I, can I speak ready. from a, a floridian perspective it's like you see the hurricane on the radar approaching but you got that week to prepare for it you know you know it's coming mm, okay. and everyone's on edge a little bit yeah, that's a that's a good uh good analogy, Pat. And uh, yeah, we ha- also have some like just interesting storylines to talk about this week too, right? Like thinking Jesse Marsh, we want to cover him a little bit. We also have the whole Chelsea situation, which oh, you know yeah. we'll try and make some some sense of it, but definitely a lot to a lot to talk about. So um, yeah, I guess with that, we'll start off with Gio Reyna for today. So. We finally got to see Gio Reyna back again, right, Pat? You know, we thought he was back finally. once. We thought, uh, you know, he was finally healthy. And uh, unfortunately, you know, picked up an injury there pretty much, you know, I think it was the first first game back, right? You know, yeah, um, pr- pretty early on there too. So, yeah, he, he came back, uh, subbed on in this game over the weekend that Dortmund played against Armenia Bielefeld, uh, Bielefeld. And, yeah, just, just really I felt like got into the flow of the game pretty quick. Um, you know, was able to to kind of influence the game in, in certain moments and actually almost had a chance to score, also had another chance to score off a header. So was really just I, I thought it was good, right? I feel like when he first got back in that that game where he got injured, um he, he looked a little tentative. He looked like, you know, he or I guess there was the game before, right, where he subbed on. He just looked a little like right. lethargic, out of out of rhythm. And in, in this game, I, I didn't really see that. I saw someone who was confident. Obviously, he's been chomping at the bit to get back on the field and play. And, uh, yeah, I think he's just, you know, really motivated now, right? You know, he's missed most of the season, only played five games uh, up until this point uh, before playing, you know, this weekend. So it's just not been the season he's wanted. And, and I think that's really motivated him to uh, come back stronger. And obviously, again, you know, we just talked about it a little bit earlier. This is – a big week uh, leading up to, to probably the biggest week we've had in what, six, seven years. Yeah. So. Oh, and it's, 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 it's awesome. Amazing to see him back on the pitch and finally being able to cover him right on our show and just seeing people yeah. without him and Instagram, all the social media posts. And it's awesome to have Gio um, back in action. Um, and again, I think it's great that he's getting these substitute appearances, kind of easing back in. Um, and again, he's just such an important player. I think for the, the group, right, you know, on the pitch, off the pitch to be a part of these these crucial games because of his mentality, right, you know, his fierceness. Um, that's somebody that you want in Azteca, right? You know, that, that's somebody that you want, you know, rallying, even though he's so young, right? I mean, he already feels like he has that veteran kind of spirit, right, and, and that grit, especially for these games. So, again, you know, just I'm knocking on wood here, but it's it just seems like everything's lining up, right? He's come back from this injury. Dortmund's in second, right? You know, having a pretty solid season, the Bundesliga, uh, obviously Bayern's you know, Bayern, but uh, <laughs> he's coming back, right? Getting some game time, his last few games um, and thinking, right? If things go well for us from a national perspective, he's healthy, he has his time to recover. And, and, and this is setting him up for a really, really fantastic kind of, you know, 2022, 2023. Yeah. And, and honestly, uh, again, I, I think just him being healthy, him kind of kind of just playing out the rest of this year motivated, right? That that's kind of the 
the goal in my mind for Geo. It's it's not making up for lost time, right? It's it's kind of reestablishing yourself and showing that you know, showing again people that that you're such a, a hot prospect in in you know world football, and that uh, again he's such a star for us. And and I think again this this upcoming window, like you said, we need to rely on players who. Uh, have the talent, right, to take us to where we want to be. And also players who play with that that just aggression, right? We, we know Gio is one of those players who likes to kind of mix it up. He's got a little bit of an edge to him. So, um, yeah, I, I can't wait to see, you know, that on display again. So, yeah, I think I think all in all, Pat, it's just, it's just really good to see him back again. Uh, you know, we hope he stays healthy, right? We say that with all of our players, but, uh, you know, Gio especially in this moment. Yeah. No, I completely agree. Um, and I guess kind of shifting to goalkeepers. Um, yeah. We're talk about Ethan Horvath today. My boy, my guy, Austin. Never give up on him. Never say never. But, yeah, I mean, before I get into Forrest, it's it's a pretty interesting goalkeeper situation. I think Stefan is now. I thought I heard some reports where he's kind of back, right? Um, seems like he might be okay and, and healthy, you know, leading into these games. I'm off to double check that, but um, yeah, obviously Turner, we know what's happening there. Um, there's been some uncertainty, right? You know, and, and goalkeeper, you know, building out of the back, right? Yeah. So the last line, we, we, we want people in there that are you know, reliable, especially for these crucial games. And we've seen what Horvath can do with the national team and how clutch he's been. And also some areas where he's been a little inconsistent, but we're talking about Nottingham Forest today and his performances. He just picked up his third clean sheet over the weekend and a 4-0 win against Reading. And that's his fifth straight start. I mean, overall, he's had 17 saves here. And and he is just, you know, looks like a you know, force in the back there. Um, punching the ball. I think Waki put out some funny videos there uh, going over how impressive Ethan Horvath's punching is. Um, and, and just kind of, you know, getting the ball out of danger there, especially in the air. So we've come to know, right, how Ethan can be in terms of some of the impressive saves, point blank saves he's made. And you saw that on display as well um, during the FA Cup, where that was really highlighted um, and a big win against Huddersfield. So Nottingham's doing very well in the Cup. They're doing well climbing to that promotion playoff space. I think eighth or ninth now, but they have their one or two games back from those other teams in terms of games played. So interesting to see, you know, if they win those, that could propel them up to fifth or fourth. Um, and they're right there. And uh, yeah, he's had. Such a awesome, just a tumultuous ride here, you know, from Brugge, um on the outskirts there, then joining Nottingham, and then completely just under the radar after that, that you know, Gold Cup and the Nations League you know, around those times, um, with Samba obviously leading um, between the sticks there for Nottingham. So it's just great to see him really fight for the spot. You haven't heard much from him, right? He's a player that's not on social media. He, he just kind of puts his head down and works, and it's great to see it kind of come to fruition. Yeah, and I feel like what a storyline it would be, him getting you know this playing time into, again, our most crucial games in World Cup qualifying. And you know, like you said, we heard Zach Steffen is going to be back and healthy, and he's in training for Man City, and he's available for games now. But just in case, right, if something happens and – uh, Ethan needs to be called in and, and you know, called into action, right, in our upcoming games. What a storyline it would be. You know, we saw that in the Nations League final, him stepping up and delivering up, delivering in that game and, and really being a powerful emotion, you know, emotional moment for him and the team. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, who, who knows? Maybe he's he's destined to play the hero again. I guess we'll, he, we'll kind of have to wait and see. He lives mind rent-free, Austin. It's rent-free. <laughs> yes, Roll that's true. For that psychological factor. I mean, he... Again, we, we know areas he needs to improve on. And obviously, sometimes he has these really nervy moments and kind of lacks confidence in a way, you could say, um, when things aren't going well and he's down, right? You know, seeing some nervy mistakes and just huge blunders. But then on the flip side, right, in this forum, we're talking about confidence, right? And we'll get to another player, you know, that, that's confident too um, and in hot form. But he is, is, is playing at such a high level. And when he has this confidence – picking up these starts here, um, really believes in himself, he could arguably really be, um, you know, competing, if not definitely lock number three, if not a number two um, with everybody healthy. I think you could really make the case an argument um, because he's, you know, obviously now getting consistent game time and, and it's a strong championship team. Um, and the things that he offers, the, the tools of a goalkeeper, 
um, you know, are, are pretty impressive, you know, right in par with some of our other ones, you could argue. So, yeah, I just want to see a little more consistency in the long run because, again, you know, who knows what's going to happen, you know, two or three weeks from now. Um, we've seen historically, right, some of these blunders here or there, but then also amazing clean sheets, amazing saves, you know, big games, national team, big games, Champions League with Bruges in the past and in the FA Cup here recently. I mean, he's somebody I, I weirdly kind of trust in, in those kind of clutch situations, even though consistency seems to be his problem. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's kind of the the same outlook I have on him as well. Like, I think Matt Turner and Zach Steffen are definitely our top two goalkeepers. I think Zach Steffen really needs to to again, you know, it's not his fault that he's been injured, but yeah. I, I really think he needs to prove himself over these next I however many months. Toad here at City, to be honest. I yeah, like Samsung a huge like. I wish he was playing more. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I feel like what we yeah what we've kind of feared from him staying there is starting to come to fruition with him just not being available for games. Him, you know, again not being probably in the best form when when he's you know called upon. I'm sure it's it's tough for him. It's it's you know easy to say, um, you know, it's his fault, but just not being healthy, right? That that weighs on the player as well. So, yeah, yeah, I think if if we're looking past uh, him and, and Matt Turner right now, um, then I think, yeah, Horvath's got to be the third goalkeeper in my mind. I know we talked earlier, uh, Sean Johnson was a name that's kind of been brought up. We also had, uh, you know, Gaga Slonina, right? Like, we'll, we'll see what happens with him. It'd be great to get him some experience with the USMNT, maybe even get him on the World Cup roster as like a, you know, move to look to the future uh, if we make it, right? Knock on wood. But if, if something day. happens to, to any of our, our starting goalkeepers, I, I would feel pretty confident in putting Ethan Horvath on the field. Um, I just think he's he's someone who is talented, right? You said consistency is the big the big problem with him or the, the, the thing he really needs to work on. Uh, but we've seen in moments him him be heroic, right? The game against Italy, um, you know, you see uh, highlights yeah, of that incredible. game replayed all the time of him just coming up big that game you know, save after save. So yeah, I, I think if, if we need to call on him, I, I feel confident in his abilities. And, and I think again, the team will rally around him. Right. And, and kind of, uh, you know, support him and, and, and give him that confidence he needs going into a game. Yeah. And that's the only thing I want to quickly add is just for Alter's thing. I'm a little disappointed, you know, from his manager style where I just wish he was part of the group a little bit more. Obviously it's great that he, he kind of, almost proved himself right this new group this new change coming up clutch especially like you said you know for for coming in for Stefan right when he got hurt um and making that save against Mexico um I think you know he has the full trust of the staff and the players after that um but obviously he hadn't been in the picture right he consistency with his club but I don't know I, I still think it would have been beneficial to have him you know as that third option there um you know just just in and around the team just because you know and at any moment, you know, Samba is a really talented goalkeeper, but he was able to overtake him right now and, and, and uh, you know, kind of making up and lost time with the group, I guess you could say. So I guess just a bigger complaint in picture with, with Greg is kind of the, the inconsistency with people in and around camp. But I think Horvath should have been one that, that again, I guess you could still make the argument, right? He, he wasn't getting the club time, but I still think he should have been that three. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And it'll be interesting to see what happens with this upcoming camp. So, yeah, I, I think with that, let's move over to our third topic for today. And that's Jesse Marsh, right? So Jesse and Leeds had their next two games to play this week. So midweek they played against Aston Villa. And Pat just was not a not a good game. Um, and, and this was a, a, a pretty important game, right? You know, Aston Villa is pretty much a mid-table team. I think they're in like ninth or tenth position right now. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Steven Gerrard has come in midseason, right? It's really kind of helped turn their season around. They were not doing so hot to start the year. And they brought in, you know, a player like Philippe Coutinho. Like, oh, my goodness, right? Like, definitely a player that's, uh, you know, his, his talent is above the level of Aston Villa. But, uh, you know, a great move for them. And, and yeah, it, it's a big test for Leeds, too, right? Remember, this was a team where, uh, well, both teams, when they met in the championship in 2019, were – involved in a game that got really heated. And it feels right. like ever since that game, there's always been a little bit extra uh, intensity in these uh, Leeds Villa, uh, you know, matchups. So going into the game, you know, this was going to be a pretty 
pretty big test for for Jesse and and his boys there. And uh, you know, again, unfortunately, they weren't able to come out on the day uh, with any points to show. Uh, they they lost three nothing. It was a pretty handle you know handily defeat, right? They they didn't look too good on the game. They uh, were very I would say out of rhythm. They they didn't seem like they had much confidence uh, in in you know playing with each other. They were very uh, it always seemed like they were on the ropes, right? Like Aston Villa had complete control of this game, and um, yeah, it just was a, a complete, completely different vibe that I got from them as a team um, when I watched like the Leicester game, right? It seemed like they were very much on board with you know what Jesse wanted to wanted them to do. They were very much a team, right? They were really uh, playing for each other, even though they were you know giving up some some tough situations defensively. Uh, and we're, we're kind of on the ropes in that game at times. They always seem to rely on each other and, and you know, really uh, never, never kind of, you know, wavered from that. And in this game, it definitely got a little dark. So yeah. uh, that was disappointing to see. And I think that was really nerve wracking, right, for the weekend game uh, against Norwich City, which, you know, we all know for watching Josh Sargent, Norwich City are not a good team. And uh, it's almost safe to say that they're going to go down this season. They're last in the Premier League. And uh, again, this is a big game for Leeds, right? They need to get points from this game, whether that's one point from a draw, which honestly would be a, a bad result, right? Like you got to win the games you need to win. Uh, and, and you know, that was kind of the mindset going in. They needed three points from this game. So uh, they got an early goal, right? Uh, I think it was midway through the first half. They yeah. they were able to, to score and, and go up on Norwich, but then Norwich pulled one back in the second half. And finally, in extra time, uh, you know, Gelhart was able to score the crucial awesome. goal to give them three points. Yeah, you know, you saw him run, celebrate with the fans. Jesse and his staff were very jubilant about the goal. So, yeah, a big result for them. Three more points. This puts them now four points ahead of the 18th position in the Premier League. Uh, Burnley, who sit in 19th, do have two games in hand. So, you know, we'll see how that plays out uh because one of their games is actually against Leeds so uh yeah big result three points is always big for a relegation threatened team and uh again Jesse's first win in the Premier League I think this is just a big confidence booster to build on going forward yeah he he needed that win I mean that that was the game obviously Villa was was disappointing right but if, if they drew or you know, yeah lost or, or even drew right um that game that would have been huge huge trouble um just to kind of i guess take a deep breath right you know you, you just say okay you know we got one focus on areas that they can improve and, and jesse obviously the, the the passion he had you know he was he was so happy so ecstatic i think in the post game interviews too and with his players with this team and staff and it's just encouraging right especially going into that burnley game austin that's really really crucial and with all the other difficult fixtures coming up i mean they, they really needed that. And, and it is unfortunate for Sargent, right? You know, as, mm-hmm. uh, you know, USMNT fans here, right? It's it's unfortunate, but they are headed to the bottom. And that's a team, right, that, that's kind of given up. They, they don't really have any – there's no real reason, I guess, honest, to fight just besides pride. And, um, you know, Leeds still has that chance. So they really, really needed that. And honestly, kind of fortunate, right, because it wasn't stoppage time. But, uh, hey, a win's a win. Yeah, yeah, I I agree. And I think what was really encouraging about this game was they were back playing together as a team, right? Or at least that's what it seemed like from my point of view. Um, and and they were creating chances. Again, Norwich is the, the worst team in the Premier League, so yeah. maybe it's it's easy to say that. Uh, but I, I think they have the talent, right? That's that's kind of the the shtick with Leeds, right? They they have the talent on paper to to stay up and be a Premier League squad. It's just having Jesse kind of coordinate them better, um, you know, get them back believing in themselves, back believing that they can play together as a team again and and get results. I think that's the biggest challenge that he has right now. And Jesse's a great motivator, right? We've seen that in all the places he's gone. Even I think in Leipzig, we didn't really hear much complaints about Jesse as a person and, and being true. a motivator. It was more about just the fit with his system compared to kind of what players were there and what their strengths and weaknesses were. So, yeah, I, I think – Again, any confidence in this situation is is good and something to build on. And I think a game like this where you win in the final seconds, uh, 
again, it helps create memories from the start, right? And and it, again, it creates belief in the team, belief in in what the coach and manager is doing. So yeah, yeah I think it's it's not the best situation, right? When you leave a game late, but in this situation, I think it may help help a yeah. little bit more. I think you summed up really well, and I think just important points that you brought up that kind of triggered in my mind is it's in the short term, right? And I think this is kind of where Jesse thrives, right? Is that, that, that relationship he can build with the locker room with, with player to player, you know, his personal style there and, and just passion in the short term, you really don't have this, this summer, you know, preseason, all this to get tactics, all these things to really nail down and ingrain. Um, obviously, you know, you can do it day by day here, but, it's a scramble. It's a fight. It, it's, it's it's essentially just all about belief, uh, on, uh, in my opinion. I mean, there's, there's <laughs> only a few games left to be – or a handful of games where if you're midseason, you're playing constantly, the schedule's rigorous. I mean, you, you don't have time to, to really, you know, implement all these crazy tactics and get everything down to a T and the cohesion. I mean, Jesse's – you know, he, he has that fight. He's got to instill that in team. That win was huge. I mean, that's all you can say. Um, yeah, you're, you're starting to sound like Ted Lasso there, Pat. Believe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, of course, yeah, Jesse's brutal. not Ted Lasso, but you know. that's right. Especially if he stays up, he keeps them up. But uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> kind of segueing right to to um, a striker who's in tremendous form. We've talked about week in and week out, and maybe it's our, it's it's our week. weekly Jordan Peafock segment on the yes. show. <laughs> that's right, the Jordan Peafock segment, Austin. And honestly, I think. Maybe Jesse should just bring him to Leeds, you know, goal scoring machine. <laughs> <laughs> That's the segue there. Um, but, you know, we're, we're, we're staying in the Swiss League for now. Um, our Peafock, again, uh, had a nice goal on a 2 2 draw. So, young boys, again, kind of leaving points there. But, I mean, Peafock has just been on, on a rampage in terms of scoring um, you know, all competitions. Um, I think he had another. You know, a great run there where, where, again, ball delivered kind of they're up around the 18, a nice kind of low cross in, and Peacock just got behind the back line and then slotted it past the keeper. Um, just finds himself, right, in those, in those right positions, right situations, and just give him the ball. Give him service, and, and he's putting it in the back of the net. He doesn't need um, that many touches. He doesn't need that many opportunities. He just makes the most of what he gets, um, you know, which is – you know, simple, efficient, and that's all you can ask for in a forward, which we've reiterated and why, you know, we're saying to Greg right here, you better <laughs> call him up, first of all. No, he, he will. But um, he <laughs> oh, wasn't. Okay. He'll be very upset. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we talked, we've talked the past few weeks, but again, we looked at the striker situation and, you know, Ricardo Pepe's not really playing much anymore, right? He's coming off the bench, um, didn't play against Dortmund this past weekend, or sorry, uh, Actually, he might not have played or been on the bench at all this week. But, um, yeah, he's not in a great spot in, in his new home in Augsburg. Yeah, um, you know, we talked about Jossie Zardes before the show. He's now coming off the bench for the Columbus crew. Uh, so that's not great. Uh, you know, we talked about Jesus Ferreira. He's still, you know, doing his thing at Dallas. Josh Sargent hasn't been, you know, he's been playing better, I would say. But, again, I think he's still not someone we can rely upon to – provide us with a lot of uh, consistency up top. And then Daryl DK just got back from injury, but you know, Greg Berhalter hasn't really called him up when he's been healthy. So we're kind of, we're kind of searching right now. I feel like for, for someone who can lead our line, um, it would be great to say we could rely on Ricardo Pepe and, you know, he's going to provide us the same, you know, moments that he did in the fall, but I think it's kind of foolish to be that confident in that situation. Um, and again, some of the other players we're used to seeing, I, you, you know, they're not in the best form right now. So, yeah, Jordan Pifak, again, looks like a player that we need to, you know, at the very least have in camp, even if he's not our starting starting forward. You know, these games will come down to making crucial subs. And uh, again, uh, just having a player who's a, a proven goal scorer, someone who is in good form and, and someone that can, again, just be in the right position, right? How, how often is it important enough to, to be in the right position to score goals? Um, yeah, I just feel like it's it's such an important part of the game that we need to include Jordan on this roster. Yeah, I, I mean, what more could you say? <laughs> he just, he just, he's putting the ball in the back of the net. And I know maybe he's not the you know exact prototype that, that Berhalter wants up there right up top, but a player that's, 
again, we're not saying he's playing in, in the Premier League, you know, putting up solid numbers, but you know, the Swiss League isn't bad either. And and he's playing it, you know, in, in Europa in those comp you know, competitions. He uh I, again it's it's there's some solid teams at the top of the league and, and you know, in Europe and, he, and he's putting the ball in the back of the net, you know, even if he was in MLS, if he was in you know, other leagues like twenty plus goal score. I mean, there's gonna be teams looking at him, right? I mean, you know, on radar there, it'll be kinda interesting to see what happens and uh yeah, again, he he's not like the uh you know the cleanest in terms of you know build up play, getting involved in the attack and things like that. But you can see what young boys do. They they you know put counters, they ping the ball up to him, they get in crosses early um, because they know he's going to be there, right? You know, whether it's corners or set pieces. Um, yeah, like you said, Austin. I mean, I, I especially in a situation where we've we've left it to the second half, we've needed to make adjustments. It seems to be Berhalter's mo, um, or things maybe haven't gone right in the first half. And let's just say Panama or Costa Rica, right? These low blocks we need to break down. You throw on um, Jordan here, Pifak, uh, maybe even earlier. Give him give him 25, 30, 35 minutes, or maybe second half. You know, right away. Um, so he can get some chances there because, you know, just giving a five or 10 minute run at the end is, is, is really not going to do it. Um, and, and he's putting the ball in the back of the net. So you could even argue for him to start some of those games. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, uh, yeah, I'm just hoping we, we get to see that, right. I'm hoping we get to see him hopefully late on the pitch against Mexico, right. Kind of replicating what he did against Costa Rica in the nation's league semifinals, just hanging around oh, yeah. and, and scoring a goal late. That would be That'd be ideal. That'd be a, a huge, uh, you know, if we could get that win in, in Azteca, that'd be huge. So, yeah, I guess, uh, you know, we've said our piece on Jordan this week. That's right. I feel like that's that's plenty uh, for, for him. <laughs> so, Pat, before we go into quick kicks, do you want to give us a little bit more information about this Chelsea situation? And, uh, yeah, let's just try and make sense of it real quick. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty unbelievable. And I'm sure you've all been following, right, Chelsea's – a uh, team that that's frozen um, with Roman Abramovich being the owner of Chelsea, and uh, obviously with uh, um, you know the whole Russia-Ukraine situation, it's a terrible situation where, um, unfortunately, you know as an effect to that, right, or uh, yeah, uh, effect essentially where it's damaging Chelsea's you know financial situation here and, and putting a lot of just angst and uncertainty in the air. Um, so with these sanctions, right, um, they, they froze his, his assets, you know, which is one of them is Chelsea, <laughs> which is a pretty big <laughs> asset, Austin. Um, again, you know, I think obviously with the situation going on, you know, the British government had to do what they had to do, right? It was it was, it was the right move, but, uh, you know, just, just unfortunate how, you know, it, it is affecting their day-to-day -day operations. Um, it looks like the club's essentially not allowed to generate income um, outside of existing contracts there. Um, but it can generate from previously signed agreements. There's also the season ticket situation where the holders can go, but no, you know, say you want to go to game day, right? And you don't have the season tickets. There's, uh, the merchandise as well as again, you know, signing players or, or, you know, you know, selling, it's just all kind of in limbo. Um, and it'll be interesting to kind of see how that impacts, um, you know, everybody going forward. I know two cool and team has kind of carry on business as usual. Um, he said, you know, as long as we have a bus, right, and, and you know, you're in jerseys to play, they'll show up. So um, I know it, it's probably a little bit, maybe player by player, they're, they're able to put it kind of to the side and just focus on the football. But at the same time, it's such a huge situation that's happening. It, it's causing a lot of uncertainty, um, you know, and, and, and seeing how that kind of might impact Pulisic Austin, especially – um, now rounding in the form, right? And then all of a sudden this happens. It's pretty unbelievable. Yeah, and while you were speaking, I just went to Chelsea's store, their online store. And uh, yeah, they have a big notice here. It says, due to the latest government announcement, the Chelsea Megastore official online store shall be offline until further notice. Wow. So you can't buy a pool sick jersey right now? Yeah, you'll have to go to uh, <laughs> soccer.com or uh, you know some of the other... Some of the other uh, U.S. vendors, I guess, for Chelsea merchandise. Maybe they're not even selling yeah. them. I'm not sure. I can look that up in and a second. What, but what, what jersey are you yeah. wearing? Are you alluding to something? Yeah, <laughs> I'm wearing the Juventus jersey tonight. 
And uh, yeah, we, you know, there's been some, some crazy reports too, right? There's been, uh, you know, this team supposedly sniffing around Chelsea and uh, poaching potentially... also. They're poaching. Yeah. They're going hunting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess the reports are that they're interested in a few players, Christian Pulisic being one of them. So, you know, we were, we were thinking before the show, what, what if, what if you meant to sign uh Christian and, and have uh, Weston and him playing together. That would be a pretty, pretty interesting club scenario. Right, Pat? Yeah. That'd be like an ultimate team dream, honestly, but no, I think in all series, and, and I think I was reading too, that um, I think there was like a Swiss or American kind of consortium there possibly for, for purchasing Chelsea. So who knows what's going to happen there? I, I feel like obviously there's a lot, you know, just craziness right now in the news going on with everything, but I think in the in, in the medium to long term they'll be okay. You know they'll get this sale through hopefully, and uh, everything will kind of be intact. But it, it does trickle down, right? It's a huge thing at the top, trickling all the way through the club, the whole structure there, um, from the business and operational side. And Austin, you know it more than I do, being in the sporting world. Um, <laughs> you know even how this short term can can really impact um, and have these ramifications. So. Um, I don't know Bullsick or, or even other players' contract situations, but I'm thinking like a lot of them typically end in that May June time frame, and now they're kind of frozen or on hold. Now it must cause some some uncertainty too from that end, um, along with all the COVID, you know, situation the last year and a half or two, um, losing sales there and revenue. So um, I don't know. It's it, it's kind of a yeah, just just. I don't know, not ideal, terrible. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's got to weigh on some of those players' mind, like you said, if if their contracts are up. I, I mean, yeah, you really don't know the future of the club right now. And we all think that things will play out and Chelsea will be fine. But, hey, we're, we're living in, you know, in, in unprecedented times, right? And and things may or may not be the same from, from what's going on right now in Ukraine. So, um, yeah, I think I think with that, it's, it's going to be – just kind of wait and see, right? Watch and see what happens. And, um, you know, we hope everything goes well for Christian's sake, right? That, that you know, things kind of stay the same or or at the very least, you know, Christian moves into a, a, another favorable situation. But yeah. I, I think for right now, we shouldn't be, be you know, panicking or, or thinking the worst in, in what's going to happen here. But right. uh, we definitely said it before this, Austin, we said it before all this. I mean, I... Grant, he didn't start, right? You know, he came off the bench here, um, but, um, you know, over the, the weekend. But Bulls mm-hmm. in a good situation, I, I still think. I mean, this is a top, top team with top talent. Um, and it's kind of good to have, you know, not you can't really get complacent at Chelsea, right? Because you'll instantly be replaced. You saw hudson Adoy get a run. Now I'm just not playing, right? You, you have all these players kind of shuffling Timo. You know, Havertz in now. Havertz in form now. Um it really keeps you in top kind of competitive form. And, and, and I think that's a great environment for him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they won the champions league last year, right? They're, they're yeah. a good team. No They've proved it, yeah. So <laughs> yeah. So I think with that, we're going to head over to quick kicks. All right, guys. It's my favorite part of the show. It's awesome. I hope. And I know it's yours at least. It's mine. Oh yeah. Of course. Why wouldn't it be right? Well, let's get into it guys. It's none other than quick kicks. And starting quick kicks today, we are heading over to France with Timo Weah. Um, he came on in the 75th minute in Lille's 0-0 draw against San Etienne. And going over to Portugal, a player we haven't talked about in a little while, Alex Mendes. Subbed on, only played the final two minutes for Vizela, and that was in their 1-1 draw with Benfica. And Luca De La Torre started and played the full 90 in a 0-0 draw against Vitesse. And going over to Italy, we have Gianluca Busio, who started and played 79 minutes for Venezia in their 1-0 loss to Lazio. And Serginho Des, we're going back to midweek, um, you know, where Des played and started in full 90 against Galatasaray in his 0-0 draw in the first leg there. Um, and then over the weekend, he didn't play I mean, Barca's win. So Danny Alves got the start there. So interesting to see. We'll have to monitor that situation. And uh, going over to France, this week we're on the Eric Palmer Brown train, started and played 90 minutes for Troy, and their 1 0 win over Nant. Hey, if he, does, if he doesn't do well, we can't be on his train anymore. We gotta, yeah, we gotta hop right. off. We'll have to hop off <laughs> and favor the tickets. But uh, CCV, Austin, um, you know, started and played the full 90. Uh, today's 
uh, 3-0 win for Celtic against Dundee United in the Cup. So there's been some rumors around CCV heading possibly to the Prem. So uh, stay on the lookout for that. Yeah, that's true. And uh, going to Josh Sargent, we want to talk about him real quick. Uh, he started and played 84 minutes for Norwich in their 3-1 loss to Chelsea. And then, uh, you know, over the weekend, we talked about it a little bit earlier, played 62 minutes in Norwich's 2-1 loss to Leeds. So uh, getting game time, but yeah, unfortunately not much uh, better news there for Josh. Yeah, yeah looking like a championship uh, player, unfortunately, soon, um, you know, with, with uh, Norwich. But Joe Scally, Austin, got a start, um, full 90 against uh, Hertha Berlin. So it's great to see him uh, back and getting some more game time. Yeah, that was really good to see this weekend. And uh, speaking of the championship, we're going to go there and talk about Falaren Balagoon, who midweek scored his first goal from Middlesbrough, and that was in their 4-1 loss to Sheffield uh, United. Unfortunately, kind of came off of uh, an errant back pass, but nonetheless, his first championship goal. And then over the weekend, he started and played all 90 minutes for Middlesbrough, but that was in a 0-0 draw with Millwall. Right. Goal's a goal. Goal's a goal. But... uh yeah, we're heading with, uh, over to uh, Austria with Brendan Aronson in uh, Salzburg there. He started in a 1-0 win, um, you know, as they head into that funky kind of playoff setting they have in Group A. So uh, started off with a win. Yeah, and going back to Germany, we have George Bello, who uh, started and played all 90 minutes for Bielefeld in their 1-0 loss to Dortmund. And I thought George looked okay in this game. Um, yeah, it's been good to see him, you know, go over to the Bundesliga and get more minutes as the season goes on. Yeah, yeah, no easy leagues, right? And, uh, you know, last, we're adding a, a player we haven't talked about in a bit, but uh, Charlie yeah, Kelly boy. on loan from QPR um, for Gillingham FC, and he, and he got the start and scored, uh, you know, right away, the game-winning goal and a 1-0 win. So great to see uh, another attacker uh, putting the ball in the back of the net. And that's all for episode today, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel down below. And don't forget, check out Instagram. You know, make sure you, you follow our, our content there. Like all those fantastic graphics my boy Austin's putting out. Twitter, we're also engaging, you know, with that USMNT community. So um, check us out on those platforms. Yeah, I will say we've been neglectful recently of the social media game, but we will be back soon. It's been you a, will. a hectic, will. crazy time for both of us so far, but we're we're coming close. We're going to get back there real quick. And uh, we also have our merch store we launched earlier uh, last year. So go check us out there. Check out what uh, what items we're selling. And uh, yeah. Yeah. And don't forget podcast form, right? You know, if, if you're, you know, of course you're going to watch on YouTube, right? But um, when you're commuting maybe <laughs> or just, you know, doing some, some uh, you know, boring data entry and Excel sheets, right? You know, put us on, right? The podcast, Apple, Pod, uh, you know, Google Podcasts, you know, Spotify, all that. So uh, make sure to check us out there, too. Yeah. And uh, again, it's a, a big week, right, coming up for the USMNT next week. Uh, we're, we're looking for the roster to come out this week. We've been talking about doing a live show, kind of getting our reactions for that. So stay tuned for some news. And uh, we're also going to live stream before the Mexico game uh, next Friday night. So make sure you, uh, you know, have your notifications on for that live show. We're, we're going to actually do some oh, yeah. giveaways during the show, too. So Definitely want to pop in, you know, stop by and check that out. We got some cool things we'll be giving away. And, uh, yeah, yeah, just an exciting time, right? Had some some good storylines this week. This weekend will definitely be packed with yeah. some more. So, uh, yeah. Definitely. definitely good to have some storylines with all the injuries, right, that, that we're having, but also some players emerging, like we've said, and we've talked about on this show. So, um, you know, feeling a little bit, you know, excited, you know, nervous, all those feelings, right, that you have, you know, kind of that week out. You're like, can we get there? We're so close, Austin, because we're just three games away, and, and maybe one day we'll do it. That's right. That's one day. We'll get back to the World Cup and also win the World Cup.